Hello and welcome to the fifth weekly wonder of 2015. My name is Steve M. Nash from selfhelpcollective.com and smnash.com. And it's a bit of a grey day, not just because I'm wearing this top, but it is a grey day. This is my walking top. I'm about to go walking and I'm filming this in my conservatory. So background information. A grey day. I guess the quote I'm about to share, it's about grey days and bright days. The words are from Anais Neen. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. We don't see things as they are, we see things as we are. Anais Neen. That is a classic inside out understanding quotation by Anais Neen, a writer of erotica. I love those words. I love them five years ago when I first shared them somewhat nervously. I, I, I love the words and I kind of got them. But, but I get them much, much deeper, much, much deeper. I'll try and share that deeper understanding with you. But let me just run the, the words by you once more. We don't see things as they are. We see them as we are. Hmm. So, let's say you have a friend and she is making a hash of her relationship or she's getting anxious at work or she's really struggling to discipline her child. Now, how you respond to that person's discomfort really what how, what you see about your friends troubles really tells you about yourself not your friend so if you are loving and holding and kind and patient whatever this friend is struggling with or whatever this friend is boasting about or even if this friend is not listening to you very well or they're, they're always talking about themselves. If you are able to be with that, it means that you're able to be with that person's weakness. That, and that means, that means that you're able to be with your own weakness. Hmm. So when I tell somebody that I'm, say, struggling to get coaching clients. Not struggling, but the stream of clients is not yet a river. I'll tell three people this. One person might tell me, oh, have you thought about this? And have you thought about that? And what about this other tactic? Another person might really get anxious and worry and might make them think about their own job and how insecure their job is. And a final person might just listen and ask me how, how that makes me feel. There, the, 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 that's an example of, I, I say something, I say a situation, I, I describe something, get completely different responses because they're, they are, the, each of these um, imaginary responses I'm giving as examples is an example of how you can see something how you can make up something from a situation now this is make sense to me but as I'm explaining it to you it doesn't sound very clear so let me let me come up with another example
hmm, kind of struggling. It's really, it's really fascinating. I really, I really do get this quote, but I'm finding it difficult to explain. I wonder why that is. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. Let's say I... I describe my relationship, relationship situation to somebody. I can hear when I say X happened and Y happened and then Z happened. Someone will make that mean something. And they'll make that mean something dependent on their level of consciousness, their level of how well they're accessing their own wisdom, their level of ease with themselves. So I could describe situation X, situation Y, situation Z. Person A could get cross. Person B could laugh and think, you're crazy, Steve. And person C could just listen. They could just listen. So what, I don't know if you notice this in yourself. When you tell people things, there are certain, there are people that you know you can t say things to. There are people that you know that you can be yourself with. You know that they'll be able to be with it. And either it's because they love you or they just happen to be very loving people. And there are people that you feel that like you can't say something because you're going to sort of re re receive their chastisement and their criticism. And this is kind of an understanding of what Anais Neen's talking about, it's, it's kind of, it's you knowing that some people won't be able to deal with what, what you're talking about. They'll make so much of it. They'll project their issues onto it. They'll make it about themselves, not about you. And you will not feel listened to. You'll not feel guided. You'll not feel held or loved. So that is an example of how we all know that people m making it up, we're making it up. We often decide that X and Y and Z means something, means the end of the world, means the end of the relationship, means war, means peace, means love. We do this as well. We see certain situations and we make it mean something. And what we make it mean is really a reflection of where we are in ourselves, our level of consciousness of how much we see, how much we don't take life personally, how much we're, we have a calm mind listening to ourselves or not. So I am feeling that I have not explained myself very well. But maybe that's not true. I don't know. Please tell me what you've heard in this video, this weekly wonder from Anais Neen. I hope that's how you pronounce her name. We don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. We don't see things as they are. We see them as we are. We can never see something as it is, other than to say situation X happened. That is seeing it as it actually is. Everything else, what it means is coming from us. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking now, but thank you very much for watching this Weekly Wonder video. My name is Steve M. Nash from selfhelpcollective.com and smnash.com. Please share your comments. And if you have a better way of describing this quote, please share that too. I could have stopped, considered, written down some bullet points, but that's not my way. I prefer to be transparent as much as possible. I hope that serves you as well as I think it serves me. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.